Is that the air circulator? Yes. Ah, I hate to come with this place. It stinks. It's too clear in the moment. Well, my man, here we are. This is what we call the cellar. More than 35,000 feet under the ocean. Well, are these what we've come for? Yes. Now what Zebrecken calls the luggage. Well, what are they? Just help me get them up to Iguria. I said, what are they? This is going to take a little time. Let's get started. Spencer, I asked you a question. I'm not moving from here until I know what they are. You'll do as you're told. Now get on with it. Are you going to make me? There's just the two of us here, Spencer. All right, Have it your own way. They're warheads for nuclear missiles. They're what? Warheads for nuclear missiles. Now, let's get them up there. Do you expect me to help you? They're going up to Aguirre, with or without your help. Hello, Anne. Hello. What are you doing here? Well, I've come to see if you need any help. Oh, aren't you helping Professor Westfield anymore? No, he's having some new parts made for the transmitter, so I can't be of much help for the time being. Well, you can help me. Well, certainly, anything. The lab needs sweeping. Oh, all right. Well, as long as you don't want the windows washed. <laughs> Mark not back yet? No. If only he'd accept the situation here and realize there's nothing he can do about it, he'd be so much happier. Mark's got his magazine to edit. He's already missed one issue. Oh, Peter, what is editing a scientific magazine compared to the work that's being done here? In a way, think of the scoop he'll have when we all go home. Oh, but I, I thought there weren't going to be any scoops about Aguirre. What do you mean? Well, doesn't Zebrecken say he's going to tell each country in the world about Aguirre at the same time? Yes. Well, then, Mark won't have a scoop. There are good reasons for Zebrecken's secrecy. Well, that's what Professor Westfield says. It's to do with not letting any one country use these discoveries for political purposes. That's right. Well, don't you agree? Oh, yes. I think it's a great idea. Except for one small detail. What's that? Well, supposing Zebrecken doesn't tell anyone about Aguirre. Won't he be the one with all the power? A good question. Yes, I could be the one with all the power. We scientists... We have a long tradition of being poor politicians. <laughs> I assure you, my dear young man, the only interest I have in international affairs is to see that my work is used as I would wish, for peaceful purposes. Clear the cellar. Control descent 1,000 feet per minute. A-OK. -okay. Clear control descent. A-OK. A-OK. They've got warheads for nuclear missiles on board and everything's all OK. What does Zebrecken want with newly nuclear missiles anyway? Should but ask him. I'm asking you. And you know, Spender, my grand tour of Aguirre is not yet complete. I still haven't seen the missile launching pad. They are not in Aguirre. They? You mean there's more than one? Well, where are they, then? That is obviously a secret. Well, I don't suppose it matters very much where they're fired from. The effect's just the same, isn't it? Professor Zebrecken has no intention of using the missiles. Well, now, that is encouraging. Seriously, it does make you wonder what he'd keep them for in the first place. They're for defense. To defend Aguirre? Yes. Against what? Oh, come on, Spendler, you can tell me. Who's going to attack Aguirre? Who's the enemy? Well, maybe there isn't an enemy yet. And the best possible way to defend Aguirre is to attack. And that's what Zebrecken plans to do, isn't it? Attack. But what and when? I'd rather not discuss it. Spenley, you don't really believe that Zebrecken plans to keep these things just for defense, do you? At this scale, this is Aguirre. Are you reading me? Yes, what is it? You failed to check off at 33,000 feet. Is everything all right? Yes. Eh, OK. That escape's all right, sir. They failed to check. Very well. It was careless. Nothing must go wrong now. Mark says Zebrecken's up to something sinister, and I agree with him. Peter, what you and Mark really object to are his methods. Well, even you said he was laughed at. Well, there were people who laughed at his theories, yes, but that was a long time ago. It's all forgotten now. Why, Zebrecken? 
You're not suggesting that he's planning a revenge on all the people who wouldn't listen to him? Well, it might be. Well, that's ridiculous. Well, perhaps it is. But the fact remains that Zebrecken will be in a very powerful position once the work here is finished. And that frightens you? Yes. Well, it doesn't frighten me. I believe in what he's doing. I'm not so sure. What's this? That's a glass sphere that we used in a series of implosion tests. Implosion tests? We were studying the effects of water pressure. There's a little hollow in the center of that sphere. I can't see it. Well, the sides of the sphere are very thick compared with the, with the size of the hollow. We put one of those into a special bag and we lowered it over the edge of the geo. Then we hauled it up again to see the effects. What were they? The sides of the sphere had burst inwards under the water pressure. That's an implosion. Oh, we did this several times, and in most cases, the force of the implosion was so great that it destroyed everything, including the bag, so there was nothing left on the end of the line. But twice when we did it, the bag stood up to the implosion. But all that was left of the sphere was a, a glass powder so fine that you could rub it between your fingers without cutting yourself. In that case, how does the bathyscape stand it? Now, that is specially constructed out of forged steel, six and a half inches thick. So don't worry, Mark will be all right. to go again for the rest of the warheads. Sit down. Tell me, how did Mr. Bannerman enjoy his visit to the cell? He knows we brought up nuclear warheads. Well? Well? What if he starts telling people? Let him hurt. They will not listen to him. Go and eat something. I will arrange to have the warheads put aboard the two submarines. Yes, yes. Very well, Professor. Professor. Yes, Colonel. I must be honest with you. <laughs> I trust you always have been. Those warheads, they have such terrible power to destroy. Sure. We've been together since the beginning of Agaria. Together, we shared the successes, the failures, and the frustrations. Trust me now, we are on the brink of our greatest time. I wish I could be sure you wouldn't use those missiles. I'm not a man of war, you know that, Kurt. I want peace. A world free of tension and strife. A world united with me as its leader. The world might unite against you. The missiles are our protection against them. So if the world chooses to fight, you will use them. They will not resist, it will be futile. No, there'll be an unconditional surrender without a single nuclear missile being fired. Nuclear missiles? Yes, Peter. And somewhere or other, he has bases for firing them. Bases under the sea? Yes, I imagine so. Why does Zebrecken want nuclear missiles? Well, that's what I asked Svenler. He said they were a precaution against the possibility of an attack. An attack on Aguirre? Well, no one knows there is such a place. No, not yet. But they will, eventually, when Zebracken's ready. Ready? Ready for what? Ready to try to take over the world. Try to... Mark, that's impossible. Yes, of course it is. But you know, the frightening thing is that Zebracken thinks it's quite possible. Of course, he has the missiles and the bases. And obviously, he's so Westfield's transmitter in order to deliver some sort of ultimatum. He can threaten the world with it. Yes, but the nations have defense systems. But what use are they against an attack from here? You said yourself, no one knows Aguirre exists. And even when they do find out, they still won't know where it is. Well, then we've got to stop him. Yes, well, our only chance is to broadcast some sort of warning. Make some sort of impact on the outside world. I don't care how. Will there be a possibility of using Westfield's transmitter again? No, it's in pieces just now. He's working on the modifications. Mm. Could we blow up a missile? No. They're not armed until they're assembled at the base. Yes, but a small explosion would do it. Professor Westfield told me that shockwaves can be heard thousands of miles away. Yeah, that's quite an idea. Well, we'll just have to keep our eyes skin for any opportunity. And is there time? Well, the rest of the warheads still have to be shipped to the missile bases. Of course, that may only take a day or so. It depends on where the bases are. This is main control. Mark Benneman to report to Professor Z. Brecken's office. 
Yeah. I have to make another trip in the bath escape with Spender to bring up the rest of the warheads. Mark, be careful. <laughs> it's a bit late to be careful, isn't it? But it's the truth, Anne. Mark has gone down in the bath escape again to help Spender bring up more warheads. I can't believe it. But it's true. We've got to get help. How are you going to do that? Explode something, that's how. And hope that the sound will be picked up? Yes. Look, Peter, I have to go to a meeting. I must have more time to think about this. You stay here until I get back. And for heaven's sake, don't talk about it to anyone else. No concern of yours. They fire the missiles, don't they? Help me with these. Look, Swimley, you're forgetting something, aren't you? I'm down here to do research for my articles. I have a right to know, remember? Now, come on, what are those switches for? You're right. They fire the missiles. Oh, don't even consider it. You couldn't destroy this place. With five tons of pressure every square inch? I think it could be done. Deep 22. A-OK. -okay. Deep 22. Zebracken is going to use those warheads. You realize that, don't you? And you also realize, Fender, that when he goes down to that cellar and presses those switches, that'll make you a murderer, too. something. Peter? What, what were you doing out there? Well, Peter? Look, I'm responsible for this department. I want to know what you were doing out there. It's best if I don't tell you. please contact main control. What have you done? I can't tell Peter? Escape calling Egeria. How do you read me? Over. I don't believe emergency lights last. Not long. Hello? Beth Escape calling Egeria. How do you read me? Over. The radio's dead. What about the motor? Nothing. Absolutely dead. Well, what's our debt here? About 20,000. 
30,000 feet. Slender. Look. That seam, it's splitting. That's going to give way. We're trapped. Come in, Bathyscape. This is Egeria. How do you read me? This is Egeria. How do you read me? Try the motor remote control. What's happened? What's happened to it? Quiet! Won't answer on me, word, sir. Cut in the emergency motor. Won't catch, Professor. The fault must be in the Bathyscape. Keep trying. This is Egeria calling the Bathyscape. How do you read me? I say again, how do you read me? It's stuck. Keep playing. It's getting worse. It'll go on the worsening until the whole thing gives way. We've one chance to jet us in the batteries. It'll make us lighter than the surrounding water. Well, then we float up and reduce the pressure. If we move at all. Right, well, how do we get rid of the batteries? With these. Well, come on. Without the batteries. There'll be no means of knowing whether we've succeeded or failed. We shall know eventually. That's true. Now. Still no answer, sir. Very well. Until we know what went wrong, there is literally nothing we can do. I think I can tell you. Peter. Tell me what? If telling him what I did gives Mark a chance in a million, it'll be worth it. And what exactly have you done? I threw an oxygen cylinder over the edge of the gear. It was carried down by the current. Where it eventually imploded. Yes, but I forgot about the bathyscope. I never and thought... what exactly did you hope to achieve? I hope the sound of the implosion will be heard and picked up and investigated. So, with that remote possibility in mind, you went ahead and sacrifice two lives, that of your friend and mine. Yes, but I never thought... Obviously. I... And what did you know of this? Nothing. She wasn't there when I did it. Is that true? Yes. That does not excuse you. The responsibility for good order and discipline in that laboratory rests with you at all times. You will, of course, be punished. Well, that's unfair. Well, in the duty guards. Professor, look. The bat escape is moving. You spoke too soon. You're safe. <laughs> well, you're in the soup, aren't you? You've heard that? Yeah, they couldn't wait to tell me. I'm sorry, Mark. Sorry? What about? I'm nearly killing you. Exploding the cylinder was a stupid idea in the first place. I wish I'd thought of it myself. Yeah, well, perhaps you wouldn't have messed it up. Now, look, what are you talking about? I'm proud of you. And don't worry, we'll get you out of this. That's a forlorn hope. Look, you listen to me. Zebra can maybe in the tightest spot of all, thanks to you. The bat escapes out of commission. His missiles aren't armed yet. And you may have tipped off Egeria's location to the rest of the world. Why, with any luck, they may be onto us right now. Mostly shipping reports. Came in this morning and looked through them. Four appreciations of the situation on one sighting. Oh? A Mexican freighter in the South Atlantic washed a submarine on the surface. It was a French destroyer close by and she investigated. Don't tell me, Commander, let me guess. A whale. What else, sir? But there's one other thing. Oh? A possible underwater explosion. Very slight. But was picked up by the American frigate Leroy operating off Hawaii. Did she get a bearing on it? Well, only an approximate line. Earth tremor, perhaps. We've been in touch with several meteorological offices. Japan, United States, Russia. None of them recorded anything. It just went bump in the night, eh? Yes. 
All right. Two and a half months' work, and what have we got to show for it? Nothing yet. But the Fianna can't just have disappeared. There's a knighthood for the man who can find her. Aerial photographs of almost every isolated island in the world. But there's nothing. You know, sir, there must be a base somewhere. Yes, somewhere. You know, I'm beginning to think there's only one answer to all this. The base must be under the sea. Seven tenths of the Earth's surface is under the sea. How do you search that? You can't, not effectively and quickly. So any base under the sea is almost perfectly concealed and free from attack. And how do we find it? Hm. It'll be luck. Luck? Well, don't sound so horrified, Commander. We make our own good luck by hard work. And that's what we're doing here. Could take years. I know. Now, about that explosion. Uh, show me on the map. Well, the bearing shows it came from approximately this area. The noise of that implosion might have given away our position. It is imperative that the missiles be armed without further delay. I'll be ready to sail as soon as the warheads are on board the Siana. Good. The submarine has already left. For the Atlantic bases? Several hours ago. Aguirre's days may be numbered, so we must act quickly. Yes? Professor West's here to see you, sir. Not now. I'm very busy. He says it's important, sir. Very well. I'll leave you. No. No way. Professor, I have good news. The modifications to the transmitter receiver have been successful. Congratulations, Professor. Congratulations. The range is well right. Well, I shall have to build another receiver before I can test it. There's no time. I can build a simple receiver in a few days. We cannot afford the time. But I must test the equipment. There are bound to be minor adjustments to make. No. Perhaps the professor could come with me. He could make the receiver on the voyage. Impossible, Kurt. I need him here. Then I can give no guarantee that the equipment will operate satisfactorily. I take note of that. Thank you, Professor. Without that transmitter, you cannot go ahead with your plan. I realize that, Kurt. But we dare not sit around waiting while he makes a receiver. It's not like you to take risks. What else can I do? Yes, the prisoner, sir. Send them in. All right, Zebrak, what's all this about? Bannerman, you'll have an opportunity to speak later. In the meantime, we'll deal with you about the body. You have been most negligent in your duty. You failed to stop an act which threatened the security of Egeria. Is that true? Yes. Is that all you have to say? Well, I didn't know anything about it. That's no excuse. She was in charge of that laboratory. Negligence is a very serious offense, Dr. Boyd, and deserves to be severely punished. But you have worked well, and your record is good. Therefore, I'm inclined to deal leniently with you. You will be denied all privileges and confined to your quarters in the laboratory until further notice. You. What have you to say for yourself? N nothing that would interest you. You do realize the seriousness of the situation? Yes. Very well. I have given this matter considerable thought. I can find no extenuating circumstances. Therefore, Peter Blake, you are sentenced to death. Why, you live by one in a curia as subject to the same discipline, Bannerman. There must be no exceptions for sabotage. If I may make a suggestion, Professor. Are you on the boy's side? But she almost killed me. Well, Westfield says that the transmitter must be tested. The boy is clever with the radio, so let him come with me. He can make the receiver join the void. Who will be responsible for him? I will. Well, how can I trust you? Anyway, you've worked here. Well, my research is almost done. I can write the actual description of Egeria just as well on the submarine. Very well. Take the boy to Professor Westfield immediately. Come on, Peter. Escort Dr. Boy to her quarters. They're allied against us. You know that, don't you? <laughs> yes, Bannerman and the boy, I know. Then why make Bannerman responsible for him? Bannerman said he finished his research. See that he writes the articles before the tests are carried out. Very well. But 
But why? Because after the tests, you will stage an accident at the base crew. I don't care what it is. So long as there are two deaths, do you understand? Yes. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> 